Hey guys, Sean here from Momentum and I've got another review for you. Have you been thinking about buying the Basebench Pro? I'm going to do a review for you so you can make a decision. So I have another product that I purchased from Basebench and if you haven't seen that review before, it's going to be right over here and that was for the B-Bars. Today what I'm going to do is give you a review of their other product that I purchased which is the Basebench Pro by Georges St. Pierre. So just like my other review, I'm going to go through the build, the exercises that you can do, things that I like, things that I don't like, and what my overall thoughts are. Let's go straight to it. So first about the build. When I purchased this product, it came out of the box. Literally just in a flat box with two pieces. All I had to do was screw in the top part, which you can see right over here, which has the holsters where you can adjust for your feet and your ankles. After I had to screw in some extra pins, and this is where you would attach the bands. Now of course, making sure that I could do all the exercises that I want to, I also purchased some bands all at the same time. This was also delivered by Basebench, and I have to say, it's no different from any other bands that you could purchase, but it is nice to know that you have something that is going to match in color that is black. Now, to summarize what it is like in build wise, all the cushionings that you have are quite soft, but also firm at the same time. They are very comfortable to be able to use and all your joints will be feeling really, really comfortable while doing your exercises, especially if you're doing a GHR. This is something I've had a lot of problems with in the past where you're using towels or yoga mats my kneecaps would actually hurt quite a bit. So when you're doing the GHR on the base bench, my knees have had no problems at all. Now let's go into the exercises. When I first purchased this item, I'm not gonna lie, there were only a few exercises I could think of that I really wanted to do. The first was a Nordic curl. The second was a GHR. And the third was actually do barbell hip thrusts on it. Now I didn't realize how hard it would actually be to be able to do a Nordic curl and also a GHR. So now I focus mostly on barbell hip thrust on this. But saying that, the cushioning is not soft enough for me to actually put my shoulder blades on top. You'll see the center part here where the matting is just between. And that actually pushes into my shoulder blades and actually leaves a lot of scratches on my back. So this is what stops me from using this for my barbell hip thrusts. I'll go into that with more detail when I go to the parts of what I don't like about this. Strictly in this part, I want to talk about the exercises. So you can do really interesting exercises like Bulgarian split squats. You can also do your GHRs, barbell hip thrusts and hip thrusts. And also all your banded exercises too, including wood chops and even banded squats as well. Now I'm not saying they are optimal, if honest, you're making up exercises just to justify that this is actually useful for your purchase. Because everything that you can do you can actually do without this item over here. So like I said, I want to go to things that I don't like about this. The first thing is definitely about the gap between the two shoulder mats because the steel part that is holding it together is actually high enough for it to be able to touch your skin, which I believe is defeating the purpose. If they had actually made this a little bit lower, it would not touch you and it wouldn't cause any scratches on you. So this part right here is the thing I was talking about in regards to the steel part between the two shoulder blades or the two shoulder pads. It really actually protrudes a lot more than you think. Um, and I know it doesn't show you justice here and it looks significant enough, but when you actually compress and uh, put your weight onto those shoulder blades, it really does actually scratch. So you could either, you know, scratch your back or even damage your shirts like I have with mine, not fun. So saying that, you can see the base bench non-pro version, which is a flat top. I probably think to myself, I should have purchased that one. Because the flat top, you can still do all the exercises that you want to do, including dragon flags, GHRs, and also Nordic curls. But you can also include barbell hip thrusts because there's nothing to scratch you. The next thing is, like I've mentioned with the B-bars, the products are nice and they're supposed to be easy and stowable but it does also feel a little bit flimsy in the build. It feels like it could break after a few years worth of use, if not a few months, but that's just me. Now let's go to the things that I do like about this. I'm not a handyman, and I do like the fact that it's very easy to build. It's very easy to care for as well, 
in the sense that it doesn't require a lot of cleaning or maintenance. I do like the fact that it's easy to store inside my gym. But saying that, I actually don't use it all that often compared to everything else that I have, like the B-Bars that I purchased. With this being said, I will try and make an effort to do it, but I still find it quite hard to include the exercises into my program. At the end of the day, if I want to make good use of it, I have to make the time for it, as opposed to making excuses. So now that I've said that, showing you what I don't like and what I like about the Base Bench versus the Base Bench Pro, which one would you purchase? Now, obviously, as you can see, I have the Base Bench Pro, but looking back, I would have preferred that I purchase the Base Bench Standard. It would have been $50 cheaper, and also, I believe, I would have got more usage out of it. Because now, instead of actually using this for barbell hip thrust like I initially did, I've used my drop mats from my Ollie lifting days as the bench to be able to do my barbell hip thrust because it's the right height. So now I've kind of lost the use of this. So which one would you purchase if you're looking at the two? And that's actually my recommendation for everyone out there. Instead of getting the Base Bench Pro, I actually highly recommend that you get the Base Bench because you can also use that for pistol squats and progressions. But I'm not going to lie, both the Base Bench and the Base Bench Pro, you could definitely use something else. You don't actually need these two pieces of equipment to be able to help you. Because if you want to do GHRs and you have a squat rack, you could actually just load up your squat rack with your barbell and have that used instead. If you really want to progress your pistol squats, there are so many other ways, including chairs, using a broomstick and a yardstick, and even just that your standard bench press. You don't actually need the Base Bench Pro or Base Bench. The same goes with your Dragon Flags as well. You can just use something that's a little bit heavier to be able to hold yourself onto, as opposed to using these actual items. So that's all I really got for you guys in regards to buying the Base Bench or the Base Bench Pro. Because for lower body exercises, I actually thought I would use this a lot more than I would, and I really haven't. I don't think I've touched it in the last two weeks. Now saying that, I've made this video, I'm probably gonna make an effort because I have already purchased it. But that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment, like, share, and subscribe, or give me any recommendations of what you think I could do with a Base Bench Pro.